Brenda Beatty from Brenda Beatty's Breaststrokes. What gift to get for an artist? I've done some research and I'm going to show you mostly brand new stuff, new products that have been on the market in the past year, just come out or maybe the year before. This way, maybe your artist will not have seen these products or have them or even know about them. Chances are you might end up buying something that your artist doesn't need. So why not look at the brand new stuff that's out? I've chosen the following care categories, art supplies, art furniture and equipment for the studio, books, and that's in two different categories, historical fiction, so the lives of artists, the great reading material, and nonfiction books, such as books on psychology, uh, how to be creative and stay creative, um, and how-to books, how to paint, etc. There's also magazine subscriptions and novelties. So those little stocking stuffers and funny stuff. And that's towards the end of the video. Get what gift to get for an artist? Well, that <laughs> now that you've heard of the categories, I'm sure you're already getting ideas, right? If you're new to my site and like art, then please subscribe and press the bell to get notified about new videos coming out. You might even see a cat. <laughs> My cats occasionally make an appearance in this in videos. I don't know if there'll be one in this one. <sighs> you have lots of money to spend on an artist or maybe just a medium amount, or you're just looking for a few stocking stuffers or maybe a gift for an art teacher. You've come to the right place. I have links to most of the products that I'm talking about in this video. The links are in the description down below the video. <laughs> the, um, some of the links I get a commission for, and this money that I get from them goes towards the channel itself so that I can keep expanding it and keep bringing you free videos on how to paint. Buddy is looking for something to buy me for Christmas? Well, you might find some ideas here. <laughs> art supplies. Everyone loves art supplies. Daniel Smith has just come out with eight new watercolor colors. This company has produced six grays, one called gray titanium and a new red called red jasper genuine. This is a lovely brush set from Da Vinci called the Ford 5240 Watercolor Deluxe Box Set. This set is a wooden box that is filled with five quality watercolor brushes, a piece of soap, a paint cloth, and a special brush rest. All the brushes have a hexagon handle. That's pr to uh, prevent them from rolling. This set includes Kalinsky Sable size 2 and 12 brushes, Cosmo Top Mix B size 8, Cosmo Top Mix F size 8, and a Series 991 Squirrel Hair Brush Flat size 18. The brush has a holes in the top so that the brushes dry out perfectly. This sketchbook is coffee colored paper. It has 40 sheets and is perfect for India ink, fountain pens, and acrylic markers. And it has a hard cover. This is a new charcoal pastel sharpener and it's got a recycling bamboo box. It's got an abrasive screen that can sharpen charcoal sticks quickly without creating a mess because it lets the shavings fall through the screen and settle into the enclosed container below the shavings then then be reused. This new brush holder is put out by Masterson, the same people that did the uh, Stay Wet palette. This is a Stay New brush holder. It's designed to allow your brushes to dry with their bristles down. As you know, bristles are not supposed to be set up bristles 
uh, you know, up in the air until they're completely dry. So you'd have to lie them down until they're completely dry, which is awkward. We usually end up sticking them into a jar or something. Now we can put them in this new holder, let them dry, and it grabs onto the brushes and just holds them there. It, it uh, mounts easily to an easel wall or workbench also. Most brushes are made from the fur of ferret, squirrel, goat, or horse. If this upsets you, you can now have the option of vegan brushes made with synthetic sable. Equipment and furniture, things to brighten up the artist's studio. The first thing we have is the A4 light box. So this is the ultra thin A4 light pad. And ultra thin it is. It's a little electronic device. It's as thin as a piece of mat board. I have it plugged in. You can see there's a blue light here. And it's for tracing. So turn the light on. I, I have a drawing here and I would like to put it on watercolor paper and create a watercolor design, a watercolor painting. So I'm going to use this Canson paper, 140 pound cold press paper. So now uh, I'm going to try to trace this. I put the watercolor paper on top. I can't quite see it, but I have more settings for brightness here. I can press it again, it gets a little brighter, again it gets a little brighter, until you get the very top where you turn it off. So now if I turn off some of my lights, it will make it even better. And I can go ahead and trace this. It's the most marvelous thing because it only costs $20 and you can order it through Amazon. You know how fast Amazon delivers. It's almost the next day, two or three days. And this is something that probably most artists won't have. They're relatively new. I haven't had this one for very long and I really like it. Although, you know, you can use photographs too. If I were to use a photograph and copy it, I don't like photographs because I like to draw. I love to draw. And I don't, I don't know, some people think it's cheating if you use a photograph. Although artists have been using light boxes and similar products for a long, long time. And there has probably always been a controversy over whether an artist should or should not. Those slides have been used, uh, light boxes. Um, I'm just gonna show you what it might be like if I used a photograph. I have a photograph here of a bell. So if I were to use a photograph and then used another piece of paper in my pad here, this one. So there, that's how it shows through a photograph. So I believe this just comes with the uh, USB plug-in, so you can plug it into your computer, your iPad, but I use this plug-in that was from, oh, I don't know, my phone maybe? Just plug it in and then plug it into my extension. This is a really wonderful floor lamp. The thing I like about it is that it has so many different angles. It's adjustable to, for height angle and the head adjusts also. It's got three different knobs. Uniform light with color rendering index of 95. Energy saving as well. The uh, LEDs are rated to last up to 40,000 hours. This drafting table made by Blick Studio Designs has an adjustable tabletop that 
tilts up to 45 degrees for drawing, painting, and more, three side drawers, and a lower storage shelf that gives you a space for larger items of books. And it comes with a 10-year warranty. There's a company that designs furniture for artist studios. They have a really great range of products. These uh, storage carts are perfect for organizing cluttered rooms and studios or for other rooms too. The carts have power, powder coated steel frames and casters so you can move them around easily. Magazines are a great gift to give to an artist. I'm going to show you some of my favorites. These are some of my favorites. This one, the international artist, is good for artists of any who, who use any kind of medium. This book, it's a, it's quite expensive. It's difficult to find, so it's a great one to have for a subscription. There is a competition every four months, I think it is. People from all over the world enter the competition. If your work gets chosen, you may get your work in the paper, in the magazine. You'll get to write an article step-by-step step how you create. And it is a, a fabulous way to get international recognition. So I keep trying for those ones. <laughs> Watercolor Magic has some very beautiful watercolor techniques, uh, people's paintings. That's a very nice one. The Art of Watercolor. This is a really beautiful magazine. It's got some really high quality photos in it. Just look at that. That is a beautiful magazine. And it's, it's so inspiring. Now, if you're painting in acrylics, there's the acrylic artist just for acrylics. And I'll put a link to that one as well. So if you're stuck, magazine subscriptions for an artist work really well. The International Artist Magazine is available in uh, digital as well as print and costs $49 per year for six issues, so every two months. The digital magazine subscription is only $18. The link will be down below for these. The Art of Watercolor magazine comes from France. It is one of the most beautiful magazines I know of. It costs about 49 euros, so I think around $70 Canadian. The Artist magazine is available as a print and also a Kindle magazine on Amazon. And the Kindle edition is available on Amazon for $18.99 and the print for $22 a year. Plein Air magazine is available in print and digital form. A one year subscription is $54.97, two years is $76.97, and three years is $113.97. Watercolor Artist previously was called Watercolor Magic. It got renamed and the subscription price for it is $21.97 per year. This is a great gift for an artist if they like books and I love reading fiction, especially about artists. The first one I can't wait to read is called Roden's Lover by Heather Webb. The work tells you about Camille Claudel, who becomes the muse and apprentice of the famous sculptor August Rodin. The Goldfinch, now that came out a couple of years ago, I think uh, three years ago, and I read it. It's really good about a young New Yorker grieving his mother's death, and he is pulled into uh, art. Uh, theft, I guess you would call it, <laughs> and gets into the underworld of art and wealth. That's um, quite a, a good read. Um, Vincent by Barbara Stoke came out last year. It's a graphic uh, novel. Haven't seen it yet. It's about the life of Vincent van Gogh and focuses on his time in the south of France. The Weeping Woman 
and that came out in 2016, but I haven't seen it yet. I didn't know about it. It's the story of Dora Maar, a surrealist artist in her own right, who ends up entangled with Picasso. And he shatters her life, as Picasso did with many women, apparently. Clara and Mr. Tiffany is about an employee, Clara, and Louis Tiffany's Glass Factory. The Secret Book of Frida Kahlo uh, is, came out a few years ago, tells uh, the story of Frida as she dealt with all her health problems and her affair with Diego Rivera. I've put some of my favorite books into this heading here, but I'm not going to report on them because they're not new ones. Although there is a new Flower Painter's Pocket palette number two that just came out. But I'm going to talk instead about The Artist's Way. That's a, a book that came out ten, oh, 10 years ago probably, but it's a spiritual path to higher creativity. It's a self-help book by Julia Cameron. And uh, it has really stood the test of time. The next one, Big Magic, Creative, Creative Living Beyond Fear by Elizabeth Gilbert. She uh, in, gives us insights into the mysterious nature of inspiration. <laughs> she discusses attitudes and approaches, habits we need in order to be our most creative. Steal Like an Artist, 10 Things Nobody Told You About Being Creative by Austin Cleon. You don't need to be a genius, he says, you just need to be yourself. He uh, feels that creativity is everywhere and it's for everyone. And he looks into the fact that all art is uh, not really original. And... Uh, that we all borrow from people, from other artists, and the ideas are already out there before we even start on them. Unlocking the Heart of the Artist, a Practical Guide to Fulfilling Your Creative Call as an Artist in the Kingdom by Matt Tommy. Unlocking the Heart of the Artist has been called the purpose-driven life for artists. <laughs> and. Uh, at the core, it's an invitation to begin a journey of healing and wholeness that will lead you to greater creativity and greater fulfillment in life. Beginning Drawing Atelier, an instructional, an instructional sketchbook by Juliet Arts, Arts, Arts Hides. Every artist needs to learn a basic drawing skill and in this book, which is part sketchbook, part uh, instruction, the author presents techniques through a lot of uh, manageable and progressive lessons. You practice alongside the um, old masters. It's perfect if you want to improve as an artist and you can work at your own pace. I've been drawing for years and I just can't wait to get this book. I'm sure it'll improve my drawing. The New Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain by Betty Edwards. If this book was originally published in 1979, and then 10 years later, she made another um, revision to it and republished it. And now it's in its fourth edition. It has the very latest developments on brain research, new materials on using drawing techniques in the corporate world and in education, and instruction on self-expression through drawing and an update section, updated section on color. There's uh, detailed information also on using the five basic skills of drawing for problem solving. So once again, another really fantastic addition. 
Carlson's Guide to Landscape Painting. This book came out in 1973, but I couldn't get a hold of it except in um, an ebook. Uh, it wasn't available in hardcover, but it has recently become available on Amazon in hardcover, so I had to include it here. It's um, it's just a wealth of information on the choice of the subject of landscape painting. It tells what to aim for, explains color, atmospheric com conditions, and all the light effects found in nature. It's an excellent book. The new art book for 2019. This is an online book put out by Art Freaks Global, which is a non-commissioned online art gallery. I just wanted you to know about it. They believe that great art doesn't need interpretation. It just needs representation. It needs to be seen. So there's an amazing amount of beautiful art in this book. So go take a look. There's free and I'll have a link for it below. Novelties, fun stuff, little stuff, big stuff. The first thing we have is the Bob Ross bubble head with sound. <laughs> so it's got a bubble head figure that plays 10 different wise and witty sayings from the um, master Bob Ross. And it's got a mini easel book that has 30 of Bob Ross's landscape paintings, which can be displayed beside his head. This uh, glass bookmark uh, with an artist palette and a paintbrush on it would be a fun thing to get for your book reading artist. And the cup, the brief history of art coffee mug, but there's an awful lot of beautiful coffee mugs. Just uh, if you look on the link, there's a whole slew of art mugs to choose. I also like the group of seven paintings, the mugs with that on them. And I'd love to have a whole collection of art mugs. So listen up, my peeps. Socks. These hot are called hot socks. They're for men and women, and they all have different artists painting on them as well. You can buy single sets or sets of six. What a fun thing to get or give. Jewelry is a great thing to get for your female artists. We have a retro artist bracelet. Um, it's only $4. It's kind of a, a cute gift as well. Palette drop earrings for $14. There's a necklace and uh, fantastic t-shirts. If you just look into um, artist t-shirts, there's uh, quite a big variety and I like the uh, let it go one. <laughs> so I put it up here, but there's an awful lot of different t-shirts. So go and have a look. I hope you have found something in all these treasures. Thanks for watching the video. You know, if you haven't got ideas from all of these products, you can always get a gift card from your local art supply store. And we want to support our lo local stores as well.